Welcome back to the classroom. I'm Kathy Kay here to answer another one of your golfing questions. How do I tell another player their actions may be breaking a rule? Ooh, this is a tough one. It's so tough that oftentimes players will avoid telling them and that's just not fair to the field. So before I answer the question and help you formulate a phrase or a comfortable way to do such, let's look at the rules and see if we can set a foundation on why it's important for us to bring this to the attention of a player. It starts in rule one. So this is our player's edition, the nice little pocket size or golf bag size uh, edition of the rules I'm sure you're carrying in your bag. Rule number one, the game, player conduct and the rules, has three different parts. And we're going to focus on just two of those parts to help us figure out how to answer this question. The first part is just titled the game of golf and it gives us a description. We're going to focus on the next two. So 1.2 is called standards of player conduct. All players are expected to play in the spirit of the game by acting with integrity. For example, following the rules, applying all penalties, and being honest in all aspects of the play. Showing consideration to others, for example, by playing at prompt pace, looking out for the safety of others and not distracting the play of another player and taking good care of the course. So, you know, replacing your uh, divots, fixing pitch marks and raking bunkers, those sorts of things. So we're going to look at that player conduct, remembering the part about following the rules and applying all the penalties. The second part is 1.3 and it's playing by the rules. You are expected to recognize when you have breached a rule and to be honest in applying your own penalties. This is important to know because we can pretty much make the assumption that players are adhering to these rules. So when you see someone and you think, oh my goodness, their actions might be in breach of a rule, wouldn't it be a lot easier when you approach them to assume that, hey, they are going to want to know because they're honest, they play with integrity. You don't have to feel like the bad guy or the sheriff that you're the one assessing a penalty. You're not. You're just bringing it to the attention of the player that, that they might be proceeding in a way that doesn't follow the rules. Now, we can also assume that they wouldn't be doing this intentionally, that they're playing with integrity and they're just doing the best that they know. So it, it presents a learning opportunity for that player and possibly for you and others in the group. So when is the best time to let that player know that you think possibly they're proceeding incorrectly? Well, I can tell you from experience, as soon as possible. So if you are right next to that player, tell them right away. That way, all the details are just fresh in your mind. They're right in front of you. If you need to reference a point on the ground or a club or a branch or anything, you are right there and it's all fresh and you can clear it up as soon as possible. Now, if you're witnessing something that the player is doing across the fairway, sometimes you may want to yell over if you can stop them and prevent them from incurring the penalty, by all means do so. But if they've already done the action, just tell them at the earliest convenience so that they'll know how to score for that hole. Let's take a look at some examples of players bringing it to the attention of another that they are not allowed to proceed in that manner. Uh, uh you can't do that. <laughs> oh, Betty, I'm sure that's probably not allowed. I think you're gonna get a penalty. Oh no, no, you cannot do that. No, that is unacceptable, illegal. No, you cannot take that shot. <laughs> Oh my 
God, what are you doing? You know this rule. I can't believe you. Just so you know, you really can't, you're supposed to do that a different way. You can't just pick up that ball like that. That's a penalty. Okay, quite a variety, wouldn't you say? Two things to keep in mind. As you, number one, you're going to work to develop a phrase that's comfortable for you to approach another player to tell them that their actions may be breaking a rule. The other side is to look at how would you want to be told? How are you going to receive that information if another player is questioning your actions or bringing it to the attention that you have possibly broken a rule. You maybe had some gut reactions to our examples of, oh my gosh, I would have not stood for that, or wow, what an, a nice way I would have been receptive to listening to what that player had to say. So use all of that information as you develop your phrase for getting comfortable with how to present this uh, touchy situation, shall we say. Okay, let's take a look at an example now where a player has observed another player breaking the rule, but it doesn't look like she's going to tell that player. Give me a six. Hey, aren't you supposed to hole out? You're supposed to finish the hole. I'm not going to say anything. She's too mad. Okay, so what did you think? The player that witnessed the breach came to the conclusion that she was not going to tell the other player because she was too mad. So she was feeling vulnerable that she might get in trouble or sh she was not comfortable approaching an angry or frustrated player. Well, what are the consequences of that? In stroke play, one of our responsibilities as players is to protect the field. So unlike other sports where all the players are present at the same place and can be overseen by one set of officials and they're all on this consistent um, field or court, golfers are spread out all over the place and they can be spread out over the entire day. You may be in a tournament have teed off and finished before your competitor has has teed off and even begun their round. So there's no way that a, even a team of officials can keep their eyes on everyone equally. That's why this responsibility falls to the players. We are going to do our best. I'm not saying we're gonna get it right every time, but we certainly wanna to strive to do our best to make sure that everybody in the field is following the same rules. So in this example that we just saw where the player said, oh yeah, she's too mad, I'm not gonna tell her. How does that player feel when the results are announced and the player who didn't hole out and who was not assessed a penalty because it wasn't brought to her attention gets places and gets a payout above someone else who should have received that because that player would have gotten a penalty stroke. That is why it's so important because the person who now is gonna place below that player was counting on you to make the playing conditions even that everybody was following the rules. Okay, let's take a look at another example. My ball's in the sprinkler head. So I'm going to drop my club and take relief, club leaves relief, and uh, no, 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 you, you, oh, you're still in, you're, you can't be in the fairway. I took relief no closer you're, to the hole. You can't be in the fairway, no, that's not right. Get out, bring it back. All right, all right. I don't think that's right, but. Okay, 
So what did you think about that one? Some of you maybe thought that the player coming in to tell the other one that she couldn't do that was maybe a little gruff, or it's just the facts. It's what that player thought to be true in this scenario. And what she was objecting to was the player take, not taking relief from the removal of obstruction. What she was objecting to was that she couldn't then take it from the rough and into the fairway, when indeed you can, if your club length measures. The other player, not knowing for sure what the rule is, just believed her and submitted to following her direction. So there's kind of a side lesson here on why it's important for you to know the rule. You will notice though that the player who was receiving the information, being told that, hey, you can't do that, was perfectly fine accepting, um, maybe felt that they were a beginner golfer and didn't know the rules, and so just followed along. There was no big conflict here. So it was a, a un upsetting interaction, wouldn't you agree? I'm in on a sprinkler head, so I'm going to take relief into the fairway. One club, drop it. Hey, um, I'm not sure if that's correct. Are you sure that's the right rule? I, I didn't know you could drop that. it in the fairway like that. Oh well, I, I think I I think I actually can. Do I you sure? know for sure? I don't. I'm not sure either. So tell you what, I'm gonna play two balls. I think that's a great idea. From here, and yeah. then we'll determine it afterwards if that that's actual relief. Okay, that sounds like a good okay. plan. Okay, cool. Okay, we had the same scenario where the player's ball was in a sprinkler head and she was going to take free relief from that. So proceeding in the way that she knows best, she measures her one club length and drops and it comes to rest in the fairway. The other player is questioning that. Does she get to go to the fairway or does she not? So she comes in and it's a very pleasant exchange. Both players are gracious, they're listening to each other, and in the end, they disagree. So this is where playing that second ball comes into play, which we know we should all be familiar with, and this is a scenario that illustrates the exact reason why. And that's what their decision was, that neither of them were sure that the other one wasn't right, there was just enough doubt created, and that's the rule, when in doubt of uh, procedure to go ahead and finish the play of the hole with two golf balls, which is what that player was about to do. Okay, let's take a, that, a look at another example of that scenario, a different personality still yet in presenting that they think the player may not be uh, following the rules. I'm on a sprinkler head and I'm going to take relief, no closer to the hole, and this is kind of a bonus because it puts me into the fairway, which I really what? love. What? Yeah. Oh, what? It puts me into the fairway. Yeah, yeah. Well, you do get relief from that sprinkler head, but you don't get to go in the fairway. You got you got to well, drop it over here. I actually do believe no. that I can so long as it's not closer to the hole. No. Uh, no, you cannot improve the condition of the lie of your ball valve. You need to drop it over here in the rough. Okay, Kathy, I hear in you. In the rough. I hear what you're saying, but I'm pretty certain that I know the rule too. So I'm just going to play my ball, and if we have a dispute afterward, we'll just deal with it af after score. If you're going to be, she's well, going to be disqualified. Well, that that's okay. All right, what did you think of that one? Now, that person uh, being contradictory looked an awful lot like me, but I don't think it could possibly have been. What we were looking to illustrate there is that when you get that very um, strong-willed person speaking with conviction, coming over and telling you something that you don't agree with. So again, the players didn't agree, but it wasn't nearly as pleasant as our last example, was it? Both players were firm in their positions. Okay, we are not going to come to fisticuffs on the golf course, okay? If you find yourself in this position, simply do what these players did. You, you don't even have, you, neither player had to give in. Now, the only player that is possibly going to 
pay the penalty or face the consequence is the player whose ball it is. And this player was calm and reasonable and believed so much that she was proceeding correctly, that she was standing by that and, and said she would accept the consequences of her actions when they got into scoring. Perfectly fine. So again, let's look at both sides of that. If you're the person that, like Val, she believes that she's proceeding correctly with being able to take her drop in the fairway, then do stand firm. Relay to the other person, I hear that you don't agree with me and that's okay. I'm willing to accept the consequences, but you need to be quiet now. I'm going to play with this ball. Okay. And the other person, if you're the one being told, hey, be quiet, I've heard that you don't agree with me, then you do. You need to be quiet. The play needs to continue, move along, okay? We shouldn't be holding up play with a big, long, drawn out conversation about which way to proceed. We need to be mindful of the pace of play while resolving these issues on the golf course. All right. Let's take a look at a little different scenario though, and you'll see how these players have learned. They've developed the phrase that they're gonna use, and they're both very gracious on the giving and receiving end of how they think that they need to proceed. Oh, Vicki, I, I don't think you can do that. Really? I saw on TV, and somebody, when I was watching golf, and it's a penalty stroke. Okay. Oh, I'm so I'm sorry. I didn't. Okay. So let's have a little review and try to formulate a phrase that we're comfortable with in using to present, to answer this question. How do I tell another player that their actions may be breaking a rule? So I think that if we start here with a few goals of how we want to be received, let's remember, our goal should be to be remember this, that we are playing by the rules, right? And we can assume that everybody in the else in the field is playing by the rules and that they're playing with integrity. And as we referenced our little player's handbook, this is what it said. So we are sure that everyone we're playing with is playing with the goal to follow the rules. Remember too, that it's our duty to help protect the field in stroke play. Match play is different, but in, in stroke play. And remember that example I gave of how, gosh, if a, someone wasn't assessed a penalty stroke that should have been assessed, they may place higher than somebody who wasn't in that group, but counting on everybody to protect the field and keep an eye out so that we would all be proceeding in the same manner. Okay. Some bonus goals as we possibly face this situation. Let's look at keeping perspective. Okay, let's keep perspective. Whether we're the one that has to say, hey, I'm not sure if you're proceeding correctly, or I don't think that you are, or if you're the one that's hearing it, if you're being told that, this is golf. It's a game, we're here to have fun. We wanna do our best, we want to score our best, but every once in a while, we're gonna get into some trouble. I mean, they put trees and stumps and long grass and holes and water out there, there's a chance we're gonna hit it. So let's keep perspective though, a little penalty stroke is not gonna be the end of the world. In fact, we wanna focus and make it a learning opportunity. So if you can conjure up a laugh, say, oh darn it, um, I'm gonna have to take two strokes for that or possibly one, but I can't wait to share this with the rest of 
my friends because what a great learning opportunity. And now I can share with them the correct way to proceed in hopes that they could avoid being penalized for the same thing in the future. So as part of keeping our perspective, let's look at it as an opportunity to learn. All right, let's learn and then we can share and take that forward. And then the last one I wanted to take to be a re reminder of, and again, on both sides, giving or receiving this bit of information. Let's be kind and respectful. Um, that's code of conduct. Again, it goes back to what was mentioned in that rule one of golf. And it's just common sense. And it's the kind of experience we're striving to have a pleasant, learning, competitive, yet very respectful experience when we're on the golf course. Okay, so as you watch the examples, and I'll play them one more time here for you, at least the sweet ones, <laughs> uh, come up with a phrase of what you will use. And I would recommend practicing it because again, I speak from experience. The oddest scenarios will come up and, and you're half blown away by, I, I can't believe that just happened. Here's an example. Perhaps a player has teed it up outside of the teeing ground. They mistook the, the container that holds the divot repair sand and one of the T markers for two T markers, but really the other T markers way over here. And they just teed off from here. And, and it happened so fast and, and you can't believe it. And, and, and what do you say? Okay, well, if you've dress rehearsed what you're going to say, you can say it right away. And again, this is another reason why to bring it up as soon as possible. Because if you stop right then and look at the position that everybody's in, it's incontrovertible. There stands the player. This is where they played from. And oh, darn, it is the wrong location. Where if you're not bringing it up until you're at the green, you know, I, I don't think you played, you teed off from the right location. Well, how are you gonna be able to determine that now? It could be your word against theirs. So just some, some tips on that. Okay. How do I tell another player their actions may be breaking a rule? Oh, excuse me. I don't think the rules allow for that action you're taking. And that'll open up the discussion, okay? Maybe think of it in that way. What's just a kind way to open up discussion to talk about what was the player thinking? How did they come to the conclusion that they thought this is the way that they, they should proceed? Okay, let me show you those examples one more time and you can, I'll show them all. You can weed out which ones you would or wouldn't uh, be receptive to or want to try. Just so you know, you really can't, you're supposed to do that a different way. Uh, uh, you can't do that. <laughs> you can't just pick up that ball like that. That's a penalty. Oh, Betty, I'm sure that's probably not allowed. I think you're going to get a penalty. Oh my God, what are you doing? You know this rule. I can't believe you. Oh, oh no. Do you want me to... Oh no, no, you cannot do that. No, that is unacceptable, illegal. No, you cannot take that shot. Oh no. I don't think that action is allowed by the rules. Okay, great. I want to send a big shout out thanks to all of my guest actors that were so gracious in helping me to come up with the examples to feature in this video. And as always, I hope you found it useful and it'll help to make your golf game the best it can be.